Welcome to the infection tube. This is our microbial comedy club, the tiniest hotspot on the Petri dish map, where the world's most charismatic microbes meet and share a laugh. Here, every microorganism gets a chance to step up to the mic and introduce their unique traits to an audience of their peers. In this club, bacteria crack jokes about their cell walls, viruses poke fun at their capsids, and fungi tell tales of their mycelial adventures. It's a place where ribosomes roll in the aisles, and the only things infectious are the punchlines. So pull up a cilia and relax. It's a cellular celebration where the DNA stands for do not miss the antics. Come for the replication, stay for the rib-tickling replication errors, and leave with a better understanding of the microscopic world. This is the Microbial Comedy Club, where every microbe has its moment, every laugh is louder than the last, and every character is contagious in the best possible way. Tonight, it's all about Salmonella, a night led by two standout stars. We're proud to present Sally, the non-typhoidal Salmonella, and her brother Ty, the typhoidal Salmonella. Sally, the Salmonella, our first star of the evening, is a charismatic rod-shaped bacillus. Sally boasts a colorful persona, painted in vibrant pinks and reds, with dark spots marking her ability to produce hydrogen sulfide. Known for fermenting glucose whenever the occasion calls for energy, Sally turns away from lactose, making her a selective eater with a taste for adventure. Her resilience as a facultative anaerobe allows her to thrive in various environments, making her jokes as adaptable as her metabolism. Ty, the enteric salmonella, our second luminary for tonight, travels far beyond the ordinary pathogen's reach, specializing in enteric fever that leaves his audience feverish for more. His stories come from within the human host, where he's exclusively found, making his tales not only infectious but also introspective. Ty's ability to persist and cause prolonged symptoms showcases his lasting impact, making every anecdote a deep dive into the microbial lifestyle. Sally and Ty share core characteristics that make them distinctively salmonella. And here at the club, we love to make learning as memorable and enjoyable as possible. To help you remember these essential salmonella traits, we've whipped up a funny mnemonic that dances through their biology with the rhythm of a catchy tune. Here it goes. Great bacteria move flexibly, overcoming harshness, not gobbling up citrus. Now, let's dive into this microbe melody and decode the traits that make Sally and Ty truly spectacular. 1. Great for gram-negative. These bacteria has a thin peptidoglycan layer and an outer membrane that does not retain the crystal violet stain, appearing pink after gram-staining. 2. Bacteria for bacilli. Yes, they're rod-shaped, a form that enhances their motility and ability to penetrate mucosal layers. Three. Move for motile. Motility in these bacteria is facilitated by flagella, which enable movement through liquid environments. 4. Flexibly for facultative anaerobes. Facultative anaerobes can grow with or without oxygen, using aerobic respiration when oxygen is available and switching to anaerobic methods otherwise. 5. Overcoming for oxidase negative. Lack cytochrome C oxidase affecting their ability to process certain substrates during aerobic respiration. 6. Harshness for hydrogen sulfide producers. Can produce hydrogen sulfide gas from sulfates reduction during anaerobic respiration, which can lead to blackening on specific media types. 7. Not for non-lactose fermenting, unable to break down lactose into simpler sugars and gas. 8. Gobbling for glucose fermenter can ferment glucose through glycolysis, turning it into energy and gas. 9. Up for urea non-fermenter, do not produce ureas, and thus cannot convert urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. 10. Citrus for citrate utilizer, can use citrate as their sole carbon source, metabolizing it via the citric acid cycle for energy and biosynthesis precursors. When life doesn't give them glucose, they make do with citrate. There you go, a memorable, funny way to remember the characteristics of salmonella. Now let our show begin. Good evening, microbes and germs of all kinds. Welcome to the most infectious night of the week, Salmonella Night at the Microbial Comedy Club. Tonight, 
we have two special guests representing the diverse world of Salmonella. Please give a warm, moist welcome to our stars, Sally and Ty. Hey, hey, hey. What's shaking, my microbial mates? I'm Sally, the Salmonella, the funkiest, most original hitmaker in the gut. You know, people often ask me, Sally, how do you stay so fresh and funky? Well, let me lay down the formula for you, my little germs. Great bacteria move flexibly, overcoming harshness, not gobbling up citrus. But remember, folks, while we're all salmonella at heart, some of us like to take it up a notch. Our enteric friends like typhoidals go on blood adventures, while the non-typhoidals prefer to keep the party in the gut. That's right, Ty. We're the life of any food party. Poultry, eggs, you name it. We don't discriminate, we contaminate. From fresh produce to nuts and spices, even aquatic delights, we make every bite a surprise. I've got a bit of a reputation for making dinners memorable, especially in outbreak settings. But remember, I'm a lot more than just a bad egg. I'm about bringing people closer, usually closer to the bathroom, but still, it's the thought that counts. Ah, but my adventures are more selective. I'm the well-traveled enteric salmonella. You might not see me as often as Sally here, but when you do, it's unforgettable. Enteric fever, my specialty, is an art form acquired through the finest contaminated cuisines, water, and food that's traveled more than most people. Selective? Well, let me tell you about the real impact. We're not just causing a tummy ache. We're leading the charts in foodborne gastroenteritis worldwide. We can hit everyone, but infants, those over 60, and anyone with a compromised immune system are at higher risk for severe salmonellosis. Impressive, Sally. You've got more chances to pick up and pass on antibiotic resistance genes like extended-spectrum beta-lactamase genes, known as ESBL genes, because of your wide range of animal reservoirs. But you're not alone in this. We've got that feature, too. Oh, I catch it. But let's not forget who's more common in those heartwarming family gatherings. Yet, you do have your charm tie with your exclusive human-only fan base. Exclusive, for sure. Our special fans might get the full experience, abdominal pain, fever, and those distinctive rose spots starting 5 to 21 days after they meet us. And let's not skip the extras. That unique slow heartbeat despite the fever and how the pulse doesn't quite match up with the temperature. It's quite the adventure, truly a journey from ingestion to digestion. A journey? Well, we believe in making our mark quickly and leaving fans wanting more. No need for rose spots when you can have a full-blown food party. True, but let's talk about the significance of becoming a chronic carrier, our unique way of keeping in touch, sometimes for years. Being a chronic carrier means continuing to excrete the organism in stool or urine for more than 12 months after the acute infection, creating a long-term bond. Notably, this condition occurs more frequently in females and in individuals with gallbladder issues or other biliary tract abnormalities. Lasting or just can't take a hint? Anyway, folks, whether it's the swift impact of the non-tie or the lingering embrace of typhoid, we all agree on one thing. Wash your hands, cook your food, and maybe, just maybe, we'll leave you alone. What a showdown, folks. A big round of applause for Sally and Ty, the dynamic duo of Salmonella. Remember, prevention is the best cure. So keep it clean, cook it well, and stay safe. Good night. After their nice show, Sally and Ty want to share some essential take-home messages about Salmonella to ensure everyone leaves with valuable insights. We are rod-shaped, gram-negative bacilli known for not fermenting lactose and producing hydrogen sulfide. Please always remember our collective mnemonic. I, Sally, represent non-typhoid salmonella, which often causes foodborne gastroenteritis worldwide, particularly in outbreak settings, usually more severe compared to other pathogens. High-risk group for severe salmonellosis are infants, the elderly, and immunocompromised individuals. It can infect multiple animal species, increasing its transmission risk through various sources such as contaminated food, water, and direct animal contact. 
Proper hygiene and food safety are essential to prevent its spread. I, Thai, focus on enteric fever caused by Salmonella typhi and Paratyphi, spread through contaminated food or water. Humans are the only reservoirs for Salmonella typhi and Paratyphi A. Enteric fever typically presents with abdominal pain, fever, and unique signs like rose spots about 5 to 21 days after exposure. Chronic carriage. Defined by the persistence of the bacterium in stool or urine for over a year post-infection, with a higher incidence in females and individuals with gallbladder or other biliary tract issues. Clinical suspicion. Enteric fever should be suspected in patients with prolonged fever and gastrointestinal symptoms who have recently been in endemic regions. At the end, we want to share an important clinical insight often observed in enteric fever. Have you ever heard of relative bradycardia, also known as Faget's sign? In most febrile conditions, heart rate typically increases by about 10 beats per minute for every degree Celsius increase in body temperature. However, Faget's sign represents a notable deviation from this expected response, where the heart rate remains inappropriately low or even normal despite the presence of high fever. Faget's sign, or relative bradycardia, can be observed in several infectious and non-infectious conditions. Infectious causes like typhoid fever, Legionnaire's disease, brucellosis, yellow fever, leptospirosis, psittacosis, non-infectious causes like drug-induced bradycardia, e.g. beta blockers, hypothyroidism, increased intracranial pressure, hypothermia, the presence of Faget's sign can be a critical diagnostic clue, especially suggestive of typhoid fever when accompanied by other specific symptoms like rose spots, gastrointestinal symptoms, and recently traveled to endemic area. Recognizing this sign can significantly aid in differentiating various causes of fever and guiding appropriate clinical interventions. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, knowledge is power. If you've enjoyed learning about the quirks of infectious diseases, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the infection tube. Stay informed and empowered.